Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, this is Josh Powers. And I am John Moore. And we're the hosts of The Cheap Seats, brought to you by Public House Media each and every Tuesday. We're here to talk sports. And anything else you can think of that has to do with sports. Bottom line is, we are your conduit. We are fans just like you. We're talking about the stuff that we know that you're talking about around the water cooler. Once you've finished listening to the following broadcast on Public House Media, we hope you'll come and check out our show, The Cheap Seats, every Tuesday on all of your favorite podcast platforms. You'll find us way up here in The Cheap Seats. Hi, this is Emily. This is Lindsay. And this is Elizabeth, co-hosts of Beauties and Headcanons here on Public House Media. Thanks for listening to the following broadcast on Public House Media. Once you are done with this episode, we hope you'll come check out our show, Beauties and Headcanons, where we talk nerdy to you about fandoms, fan fiction, and all pop culture for nerds that you can think of. A new show comes out every Friday. Don't forget to subscribe on iTunes so you never miss an episode of Beauties and Headcanons. Thanks again for checking out the following broadcast on Public House Media. The latest headlines. The Houston Astros, the defending World Series champions, got better, adding Garrett Cole. The insightful interviews. Rick Saratella, NFL Draft Bible. With how much emphasis is put on the position, yet how many over the last couple of years we've had questions, why do we put such an emphasis on drafting a quarterback number one overall? The bottom line is there's not enough good quarterbacks to go around. And I think with the new CBA, it's really a low-risk gamble now. If you look at the playoff teams, the common denominator good quarterback play the hottest takes i think the guy to blame is the one guy who hasn't left yet i think russell westbrook is one of the bigger problems in oklahoma city can all be found on press row broadcasting is part of the public house media network here's your host it doesn't matter what your name is christian heimel now, welcome into another episode of press row here ladies and gentlemen on this july 11th 2019 i know it's been a while apologize uh, been really busy. You're going to be changing uh, the format. Uh, I shouldn't say the format, but changing the scheduling of the show here is uh, the usual day job of working in pro baseball it makes this a little bit difficult to do on a weekly basis, but you'll soon see it up on um, publichousemedia.org as well as our social media channels, what our schedule is going to be for the remainder of this baseball season, really kind of into October before we come back as a weekly show. Uh, we're still going to be here every chance we can, but just going to be a little bit more sporadic um, than we normally would be. That being said, we are talking baseball today. We're talking soccer, basketball. We're talking all of it here on Press Row as we always do. Again, we are part of the Public House Media Network. You can find us wherever you get your podcasts, whether that be Google or Apple Play, Spotify. You can find us on Spreaker, Stitcher, of course, iHeartRadio as well. You can also find us on publichousemedia.org. Don't forget to check us out. On social media, Twitter and Instagram handles at PressRowPHM, or you can email the show PressRowPHM at gmail.com. I uh, want to start off here. We're not going to recap everything uh, for the NBA free agency because I know a bunch of you guys have actually asked thoughts on that, but we're not going to go through all of it. We'll get to that later on in the show with your listener questions. Uh, but listen, I, I got to bring this up because everybody else has kind of talked about it. The U.S. women's national team, uh, from a soccer standpoint, it, it, it's unequivocal. They are the most dominant force in the world in their particular sport, and they should be paid like it. Uh, it. It really is that simple. The fact that the U.S. men's national team, which has been, we're going to say subpar. Don't give, I'm not going to say that they've been embarrassing because they've never had a history of being great, but to be so far behind the women's side of things in terms of their achievements is inc- yet paid so much more is incredible to me. It's incredulous. It's it's that is what the embarrassing part is. Now, don't get me wrong. I understand the rest of the world may not be as high caliber on the women's side as it is on the men's side and that is part of the reason. But when you get paid just for making a roster, not even playing yet for a women's 
team, you have to win the game to get paid. You can't lose the game and still get paid. You have to win it to be... It's embarrassing the way that we treat this women's soccer team, despite them being the greatest team that we have assembled. I love this team so much more than any other U.S. team I've ever been alive for. I love them more than the 99 team. I love them more than the Dream team, more than any other you know USA softball when they were dominating everything. They took softball out as an Olympic sport because the U.S. was so dominant in it. Love them more than the U.S. men's and women's hockey teams. This team is doing so much for so many people. The U.S. women's hockey team finally got their equal pay, and it went relatively unnoticed. Now, maybe that's because it's hockey. Maybe because we didn't have, you know, the men's team is one of the leading forces in the world. Maybe not the dominant force, but they're one of the leading ones. But this is different. You have Megan Rapino, Alex Morgan, Tobin Heath, uh, Julie Ertz, uh, Alyssa Nair. You have all these tremendously talented players on this team, and yet we're basically saying to them, you're not worth the same amount of money as a team where, honestly, outside of Josie Altidore and Christian Pulisic, I couldn't tell you who's on the men's national team. Couldn't do it. Could not do it. I know more about former men's national team players than I do current. I know Alexi Lalas, Landon Donovan. There you go. That's it. Realistically. I mean, you look at what this women's team has done for this country, for the youth, for the future of this country, to be as outspoken as they have been, to take on this stick to sports or this shut up and play mentality and say, you know what? Screw you, because here's what we're going to do. We're going to go out. We're going to be arrogant with it. We're going to sip our tea and we're going to win a title and bring it home. And then, oh, by the way, you're going to pay us what we're worth. That is the beauty of this women's team is the fact that, you know, we don't have these issues with the U.S. men's team when they're dunking on everybody in basketball and celebrating. We don't tell them, oh, you're being too arrogant. Oh, you're not setting a good example. We don't tell them that. We don't. But for some reason, there's a double standard with these women in sports. And it's true. And Alex Morgan is 100% right. There's a double standard when it comes to women in sports. And it's an embarrassment, especially when a team is this freaking dominant and should be celebrated. Celebrated as the greatest team ever assembled. It's amazing the fact that we find ways to nitpick and to put down these women who are being such tremendous role models, not just for little girls, but for kids in general, showing them what we can do as a country athletically when you put your heart and soul to it. And by the way, they're also doing it for less money, proving how much they really love the game. Do they deserve equal pay? A thousand percent. Have they earned it? Absolutely. Are they getting it? That's the problem. And they need to. It's an embarrassment to see this, the fact that we are basically disres- – and I don't care what – I don't care. I, I really don't. The revenue that's generated. There were more viewers for this Women's World Cup final than there was the Men's World Cup final in the United States. Now, granted, last year's Men's World Cup final didn't have the U.S. in it, so you probably would have seen a higher thing. But you have such tremendously talented women here, and – they need it. They they need to be paid what they're worth. They should be paid what they're worth because the men's team sure as hell is not worth the money that they are being paid because they have not proven that they are worth that. This women's team has. And I don't care about the revenue stream. I don't care about any of that because you know what? It, it comes down to this. If you're really going to put, you've got to spend money to make money. If you're really going to grow soccer in this sport, you need to pay these women to continue to grow youth soccer. You need to put money in to baseball, to to youth football, to youth athletics in general. You've got to put money into it so that these kids, as future generations, actually do grow up and do become a part of this. That's what has to happen, and it starts by paying the most notable athletes in that sport what they are worth. It has to happen. And I would not be surprised, and I honestly would hope that if they don't get equal pay, maybe this team doesn't go to the next World Cup, just to prove a point. It wouldn't surprise me at all to see that happen, but who knows? We'll see. When we come back, we're going to talk with uh, Jeremy Fields. He is with the American Legion, and uh, some of you may be wondering why we're going to talk American Legion here on the show. Well, it's because the American Legion baseball. They're doing something really cool, really fun, and if you don't know about American Legion baseball, maybe you didn't know exactly 
what it was or the fact that there was American Legion Baseball. We're going to talk with Jeremy about that and how you can get involved as well. Because, again, we've all got to support it it's for the future of the sports. And the American Legion of Baseball, you may not realize just how important it is to the future of our national pastime. That's coming up just a little bit. You'll listen to your questions as well. You're on Press Row, broadcasting as part of the Public House Media Network. Listen to every episode and get the latest shows sent right to you. Subscribe to Press Row on iTunes, Google Play, iHeartRadio, Spreaker.com, and Stitcher.com. Or visit us online at www.thephmedia.com. This is Bryce Burge, host of Your Soccer Passport here on Public House Media. After this episode, come join us on a trip around the soccer world as we discuss club and country every Tuesday. Stamp your soccer passport by subscribing on Spotify, iTunes, or wherever you get your Public House Media podcasts. And thanks again for checking out the following broadcast on Public House Media. This is Press Row with Christian Heimel, a Public House Media podcast. Welcome back on Press Row, everybody. Broadcasting is part of the Public House Media Network. Christian Heimel here with you. And as you guys know, listeners of the show, you know that uh, this is one of my favorite weeks uh, of the year. It is MLB All-Star Week. Um, it's obviously, in my opinion, the best sport that there is, uh, the sport of baseball. And you guys know we talk about it every single show and almost at nauseum. But we don't talk about a lot of things outside of Major League Baseball. Uh, but there's something really cool going on here. And for those of you who don't maybe know or you've heard about it but maybe don't know a lot about it, um, American Legion Baseball is one of those things that is at the root of almost every – it's kind of like the grassroots uh, of Major League Baseball and uh, baseball in general across the country. And Jeremy Fields, national staffer uh, for American Legion, uh, he's in Cleveland uh, with the All-Star Week this week, so we appreciate his time. Jeremy, thanks so much for, for dropping by. Thanks for having me, Christian. And real quick, just kind of for those who maybe don't understand what American Legion Baseball is uh, and the organization that you guys have, tell us a little bit about it and and how, you know, the history of of American Legion Baseball. Sure. So um, the American Legion is a national veterans, uh, wartime veterans association with about 2 million members nationwide. And we're celebrating our centennial this year. Uh, It was founded in 1919. So um, about six years into the American Legion's uh, tenure, they decided that baseball was an important thing to showcase Americanism, to help youth get off the streets, uh, get them in something organized, teach them teamwork, sportsmanship, patriotism, uh, things of that nature. So we were founded in 1925. And since then, like you said, we've been a huge part of baseball. We have uh, 81 former American Legion players are inducted in Cooperstown. Well, not 81 yet, but... In a, in a week, we'll have 81 because we have four, four Hall of Famers that are about to get inducted, which is, is really exciting. Um, that'll make 81. And, you know, hundreds of players have made the majors, uh, thousands actually, and uh, countless have made an impact in college or the minor leagues. So, um, yeah, we've been, a, we've been a huge part about baseball for, uh, for quite a while. You know, and that's the thing is I think a lot of people, they hear American Legion baseball and they think – you know, if they don't know it, they may not realize what it is. It's on the youth side of things. It's not as if, you know, you've got American legions putting their team together with the veterans uh, for, for a baseball game. Right. So, you know, the, the, the youth side of it, you talk about all these players that have been a part of it, uh, and it's really kind of cool to, to see it. But kind of give us, a, I guess, a breakdown, maybe competitive or age-wise, as to where some of these players currently for American legion teams are. Sure. So we're a, we're a 13 to 19-year-old program. And we're split up into two divisions, a senior division and a junior division. So the junior division is a, a 17 and under program. The senior division, which is our, our marquee one, is a 19 and under program. So we actually have kids, or I guess young, young men at that point, um, coming back after their first year of college. They're, they're able to play. And um, a lot of them use it as a springboard into greater success in college and then um, obviously professional ranks. But um, – Yes, um, we have as young as 13 playing across the country. Talking with Jeremy Fields uh, of the uh, American Legion Baseball. And, you know, Jeremy, it's, it's interesting here. You talk about 13 to 19, and there's so much attention paid every summer to the Little League World Series. But 
you guys have your own World Series that you hold each year, and this year in the middle of August in Shelby, North Carolina. Talk about the the little the uh, American Legion World Series coming up, and and because it's it's pretty similar, it just doesn't get as much national recognition as as the Little League World Series that we see in Williamsport. Yeah, um, so every year we uh, we host a World Series in Shelby, North Carolina, which has really embraced it. it used to the World Series used to travel around the country. Uh, to different sites, usually where the American Legion convention was. Um, but they made a decision about uh, 10 years ago to make a single site. And Shelby, North Carolina, which is a suburb of Charlotte, completely embraced the concept um, to a level I don't think anyone could actually believe. Um, the kids are treated like rock, rock stars. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> They're paraded through town. Um, the The turnout at games is incredible. We average about 120,000 total over the 15 games of the World Series. So people really come out, and the uh, the broadcast is now nationally televised on ESPNU. So every player who makes the American Legion World Series gets a chance to play on national television, um, which is something with, that just started two years ago. So that's that's pretty huge. But um, like you said, it's it's a great showcase for what we do. It has all the patriotism of the American Legion. Um, the players who do well in American Legion baseball are taught fundamentals, which is something that a lot of scouts and coaches tell us is lacking. Um, and a lot of other programs, it's, we focus on you know, small ball and uh, knowing your role and effort, things like that, uh, team play. So uh, the American Legion World Series is a great showcase for that, like you said, and that's uh, uh, that leads us to um, the championship game, which is on ESPNU on August 20th. So the event is August 15th through 20th this year. It's all. It, it's awesome. It, it is great to see. You know, a lot of people talk about uh, the Little League World Series and the alumni there, but the American Legion baseball alumni is pretty good. I mean, it, it, you just go to the website uh, and look at the alumni just in the A's. Roberto Alomar, Sparky Anderson, then you get Jeff Bagwell, Harold Baines, Dusty Baker. I mean, these are legitimate quality players that have been through American Legion baseball, which leads me into this. And one of the reasons why I really wanted to talk with you, because this is really cool and I think really kind of helps people understand just how significant American Legion baseball is across the country. And that is the all centennial team. You mentioned that you guys are, are in your centennial year, but what, what went into this process and how difficult was it to kind of put a nomination list together for the all centennial team? It was impossible. I mean, we, <laughs> we published the list of finalists and instantly people commented, how did you forget so-and-so and man, look at our list. It's impossible not to forget anyone. Like we had, I tried to I tried to get it narrowed down to four catchers and I couldn't I think we have the six best catchers in baseball history yeah. all played American <laughs> Legion baseball like just started catcher you have Bench Barra Piazza Carter Fisk and Pudge Rodriguez like yeah. how do I cut any of those guys and it's not me it was the, it was the baseball committee and we we just decided to let the fans vote on that so it's the whole process will be will be fan voted the uh, American Legion baseball co- committee helps me narrow it down but you know you start with the seventy eight uh, players who were inducted in the Hall of Fame as players. So we had uh, two executives and an umpire also in our 81. So you start with the 81, and then there are a couple players in there who um, are omissions to the Hall of Fame or are currently playing, like mm-hmm. Justin Verlander who's a, and Albert Pujols, who are locks to be in the Hall of Fame right. when they retire. Um, so you start with that, and then you just you, you trim where you have to trim to get it to a number where it's not overwhelming for fans to vote on it. And uh, – we got down to 60, and it's still overwhelming, I think. But if you look through the list, there is so much talent there. It's uh, it's pretty clear that Major League Baseball isn't the same if American Legion Baseball hasn't existed for the last century. You know? Yeah. I mean, it's it's insane for me to look at this. It, just the third baseman here: George Brett, Wade Boggs, Chipper Jones, Eddie Matthews, and Brooks Robinson. Like, how do you choose uh, at, at the high corner there? <laughs> so, I certainly don't envy you in trying to narrow down this list, but uh, you know, it, it is really cool. And again, you can go to Legion.org/baseball uh, to get all this information. Uh, but you know, Jeremy, one of the big things. Don't get me wrong; the Centennial team is really fun. It's really cool. But again. I wanted to have you on to kind of shine a light a little bit on American Legion baseball and how folks can maybe get involved in a number of different ways. So, so how can people, if maybe this is the first time they're really hearing about American Legion baseball, or maybe they're getting more information finally as to what it actually is, how can people get involved with American Legion baseball? Absolutely. So if you're a, a coach, I think we're one of the most cost-effective uh, youth programs in the country. You know, it's, it's getting really expensive to play sports in this country. So if you're a coach out there and you want, I mean, the, the focus on the things I said, sportsmanship, 
uh, teamwork, getting better with fundamentals, um, and you want to do it in a cost-effective way, I would, I would absolutely get involved. And like you said, legion.org slash baseball, you can find contact information for your state chairman there. So each of our state has their own chairman uh, who can help with the, the local rules and things like that, get in contact with them to get started. And if you're a player, reach out to your coach. Um, your coach might not know that this is out there, uh, but if, you, uh, if your high school coach wants to get involved, that's great. And if your high school coach doesn't want to get involved, you can also go and contact your state chairman to help find the local team nearest you so you can join them. So uh, we, have, we have stories all the time of players who didn't have a chance. Uh, Lee Smith, who's going to be inducted in the Hall of Fame mm-hmm. in a couple of weeks, uh, we just were down with him in, uh, in Louisiana. He used to drive 50 miles each way to get to his team because there was no he – di- he didn't actually make his team, his local team. So they uh, probably regret that now, but <laughs> they sent him 50 miles down the road to play American Legion Baseball, and that's where he was found. Uh, that's where scouts found him. So he was going to college to play basketball. He went 50 miles away to play American Legion baseball, and that's where uh, he got found and got drafted. So, um, yeah, most for most players, it's less than 50 miles. You know, it's a lot closer than that. So go to legion.org slash baseball, find your state chairman's contact information, and, uh, and reach out to them. And we'd love to have everyone involved. Jeremy, we appreciate the time. We appreciate everything that the American Legion baseball does. Uh, I, I live and work in High Point, North Carolina, and we've got our, our post-87 high toms here. We, we certainly love to see the talent that comes through North Carolina in general, but for it to be American Legion – uh, is even better. So Jeremy Fields, uh, American Legion Baseball, thanks so much for the time. Really appreciate it. And uh, good luck with the voting on the All-Centennial team. Thanks, Christian. Now, that's Jeremy Fields, uh, American Legion Baseball. Again, legion.org slash baseball. The names that have been a part of this are just ridiculous. I mean, Lee Smith, we said Sparky Anderson. You got Hall of Famers, Paul Molitor, uh, Harold Baines, Albert Pujols were all Legion players. So really, really cool we think about the Little League World Series, we think of those kids, you know, 11, 12, 13, but this really showcases the best of the best in that amateur rank between high school and, and their freshman year of college. So uh, really enjoyed having Jeremy on and uh, always fun to, to talk baseball, even when it's not Major League Baseball. But when we get back, we'll answer your listener questions coming up. Close up shop here. You're on Press Row, broadcasting as part of the Public House Media Network. Want to be part of the show? Go to Facebook and search Press Row Podcast dash Public House Media. Or find us on Twitter and Instagram at Press Row PHM. You can also email the program Press Row PHM at gmail.com. This is Jenna Burt, host of the Confessions of a Military Spouse podcast here on Public House Media. Thanks for listening to the following broadcast on Public House Media. Once you're done with this episode, I hope you'll come check out my show, Confessions of a Military Spouse, where we dig deep and talk about the unspoken hard truths of what it's really like to be a military spouse. A new show comes out bi-weekly. Don't forget to subscribe on iTunes so you never miss an episode of Confessions of a Military Spouse. Thanks again for checking out the following broadcast on Public House Media. This is Press Row with Christian Heimel, a Public House Media podcast. Welcome back on Press Row. We'll close up shop here on this July 11, 2019. Chris Heimel here with you, broadcast as part of the Public House Media Network. Don't forget, you can uh, always submit your questions every single week by heading over to our Facebook page, Public House, or excuse me, Press Row by Public House Media. You can also head over to Twitter and Instagram at Press Row PHM or email the show, Press Row PHM at gmail.com. Get to your listener questions first. Uh, number one, uh, let's see here, Brandon in New York. Who do you think won out on NBA free agency? Well, listen, it's hard to grade winners and losers, but I, I think what you really saw more than anything else. The biggest winner in my mind, I, I, it has to be uh, the Brooklyn Nets, obviously, getting K- Kyrie and Kevin Durant. And I tell you, the biggest winner may actually be Kevin Durant in all of this because a year or two years ago when he went and decided he was going to sign with Golden State and create this unbeatable powerhouse, this super villain of basketball, a lot of people said Kevin Durant ruined basketball. He may have just saved it by going to Brooklyn teaming up. Now, it helps that Kawhi has gone to the Clippers. LeBron is still with the Lakers, uh, and the Lakers really revamped too. New Orleans has an interesting uh, unit together. Kemba Walker going to to Boston. Uh, Golden State, obviously, retooling like they always do. 
it's really impressive to me. I think Kevin Durant may have saved basketball because now what you have is a true distribution of wealth. And it's going to be interesting. In the East, between the Sixers, the Celtics, and the Brooklyn Nets now. In the West, with Golden State, and the Clippers, and the Lakers. Uh, obviously, Milwaukee in the East as well. Portland, maybe. Uh, who knows what Houston does? Who knows what um, you know New Orleans does with Zion this year? But really interesting to see how this all pans out. And I think the biggest loser, and I've said it before, the biggest loser in all of this is uh, Russell Westbrook. Because I have said this consistently. I think Russell Westbrook is the biggest issue in Oklahoma City. Kevin Durant has left him. Uh, Kawhi Leonard decides he's not going to go, you know, doesn't want to go play with him. Paul George has now left him. Um, of course, you look at other guys like James Harden. Uh, you look at um, Serge Ibaka. There have been so many, Inez Cantor. There have been so many people who have left Oklahoma City. Russell Westbrook still the only one there. I think he's the biggest issue for that. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's him wanting to be top dog and uh, ownership has his back more than anybody else's and that's why these people leave. Or if maybe he's not willing to take salary cuts so that they can get these other players around. Who knows? But there's a reason why Oklahoma City has consistently struggled and there's only one real true common denominator between all of it, and that's Russell Westbrook. But we'll see what happens. I do think, obviously, the Nets, I love what the Lakers did, actually. I think the Lakers look really, really good uh, for coming up. But we'll see what happens here um, the rest of the way. Uh, Joe in New Jersey asking about the Home Run Derby. What did you think of it? I loved it. And this was one of the Home Run Derbies I was most excited for, to be honest. It was really cool to watch. Uh, it was really fun to see how Pete Alonso and Vlad Guerrero Jr. did what they did. The, the freaking three overtimes or whatever it was that they needed, the swing-offs um, with Vladdy and Jock Peterson was incredible to watch that, uh, to watch what Pete Alonso has done. It was really, really cool. This uh, was a great home run derby. This was one of my favorite things to watch, and I'm so excited to see what happened. Uh, and hopefully it continues with this. This is what baseball needs. They need the young guys doing these things, to have Acuna, to have Vladdy. I wish Christian Yelch could have done it. Maybe he does it next year. But Pete Alonso, and you know, uh, to have Josh Bell in there too, this was a great thing for baseball. It was really, really cool, really fun to see, and I'm so happy that that's what ended up happening. And, and uh Good good for the Mets, too. They don't have a lot to cheer about, but you look at this young kid who may not only win Rookie of the Year in the NL, but he, he may be in the conversation at some point for MVP uh, in the NL. So we'll see how that all goes, but really fun, really excited uh, to see to see that, and uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed it as well. Hopefully you enjoyed the show. Really appreciate you guys listening. As always, you can submit your listener questions. Um, on Twitter and Instagram at PressRowPHM. Email the show, PressRowPHM at gmail.com. Or you can find us on Facebook, Press Row by Public House Media. You can find me on Twitter as well at Chris Heimel. Uh, and you can get your, podcast, get your podcast every single time you want to on Stitcher, Spreaker, as well as uh, Apple and Google Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and of course, PublicHouseMedia.org. Don't forget, we do have a new format here, a, a new schedule of shows. We will have a show for you next week, uh, but then things change a little bit after that. So head on over to publichousemedia.org as well as our social media pages to be able to get all the latest information. Big thanks to Jeremy Fields. Big thanks to you guys as well for listening. And I cannot wait to see you next time on Press Row.